next uh, game. In the typical isolated pawn position. Some changes. Black played a5 and offered the draw. So obviously my opponent, uh, my student is around 20 or 2000 and the opponent is 20 to 30. So I mean, black kind of feels that okay, it's not doing particularly well and offers a draw, but I mean, it's actually not such a bad position. Uh, but okay, obviously my student declined. And so here, but he's, he still did not play the correct move in this position. So basically, Black is trying to do some counterplay, and uh, the situation with the knights is pretty interesting, actually. So both knights are kind of waiting for each other, and uh, I mean, in the way that uh, this knight is also would love to be on c4, and this one would love to be on d4. So it's uh, kind of tricky, but. I would say the difference is that uh, for black both knights can be kicked and okay obviously we have d4 square um, in front of the isolated pawn and uh, that knight on d4 is, can hardly be kicked here. Okay so a5 what is uh, black's idea? Black wants to play like a4 to kick that knight and then maybe even a3 or play b5 and b4. So just to create maybe a weakness on c3 or just to create some uh, some counterplay on the on the queen's side. Okay, so here my student played knight c1. Problem with this move is that it wants to exchange e5 knight basically. Like because the okay, next move where else to go than to d3 and then okay we exchange there, but it's not really doing anything about the about the plan on the queen's side. So black played rook c8 here, which is a strange move to me. I mean, he could just have continued with b5. So we play knight d3. Uh, black can just take it, bishop d3 and play b4. And in my opinion, black has a perfectly fine position now. Because it's very hard to avoid that we will have to take back with the pawn on uh, c3 and then c3 is going to be at least as weak as d5 and other than that we don't really have any advantage and if we take here then the problem is that our knight is not stabilized anymore with this pawn and a2 pawn is a potential target for end games with rook e8 so I believe black would have been uh, completely fine with b5 but that was a better move here, a very nice move for white. And it was knight a1. So basically the knight is going to c2 to support from, uh, from that square and also going away from the b pawn. So we can basically kick the most active piece of black with b3. And okay, black plays the same way. I mean, what else? b5, then knight c2. We are already threatening to play uh, b3 and take the pawn. So, so I just uh, looked at the line like king g7, uh, b3, knight a3, takes, takes, and the pawn is falling at the end of the variation. So black has to be ready for this. And if he's uh, pushing b4, so the pawn is not hanging, then we just play b4, uh, b3, sorry. And okay, knight b6, for example, we can just take b4, a b4, and queen d2. So you see, instead of the knight of being on c1, on c2, it is doing a very good job of very good job of protecting this uh, knight on d4. So stabilizing still and also attacking this weakness on b4. So basically, it could have been the the correct way to play. This very nice knight a1 move would have kept the the advantage. And yeah, also other thing as I mentioned. So I mean. Even if it would not be like hanging this pawn, you know, in the in the near future, we have ideas like playing h3 and f4, for example, to kick this knight, and also b3 to kick the other one. So that's that's very very nice, and our knights are stabilized here, and we 
we keep a safe advantage in this position, which which was not the case after uh, after knight c1.